the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, A Piece of Pie. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, it is during the race meeting at Suffolk Downs, and I am there with Harry the Horse. We do ourselves a little good. In fact, more than a little good. And I am feeling fine. When into our hotel room comes Harry and says... Broadway, are you here? Where else would I be, Harry? What is the matter? I just put us in the way of winning an even ten grand. Huh? But what is the name of the horse? It is no horse. It is a human being. What? Harry, who enters a person in the races? You do not understand. This is a sure thing. Harry, where is the money we win on the GGs? I put it up as a forfeit for our man to appear. Appear? Appear where? Doing what? Harry, do not stand there just looking at me. Speak to me. Where is our scratch? Broadway, do not worry. It is as good as wheat in the bin. Now sit down and I will tell you what happens. So Harry the horse makes me sit down and tells me what happens. And what it is and what happens later, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, A Piece of Pie. Well, like I say, Harry makes me sit down and he starts to tell me what he is talking about. I am having lunch, Broadway. Lobster. Broiled lobster at that little place where a broiled lobster is very good. You know, the place you like. Harry, get off the lobster and come to the point. I ask you again before I cook you, where is our money? That is what I am trying to tell you. You will not let me proceed. I will give you ten seconds, of which nine and a half are gone. Take it easy. Well, like I say, I am eating the broiled lobster when I overhear a conversation going on at the next table. Now, ordinarily and usually, I do not listen. I do not approve of eavesdropping. Do you? I approve of murder. I have a victim. Who? Where is the scratch? Oh. Oh, well, <clears throat> I hear one character say that he knows somebody who is able to out-eat anybody else in the world. Now, I know that this is a foolish thing to say because, well, who do we know that is the greatest eater in the world? Huh? Why, Nicely Nicely Jones. Well, I put up our money to ensure that Nicely Nicely Jones will appear against their man who is named Joe Duffel. I wish to get this straight. You put up our money, all the tar I have in the world, that nicely, nicely Jones will go into an eating contest against this Joe Duffel? You catch the idea, Broadway. But, but what if nicely, nicely does not? <laughs> do you ever know him to pass up a meal? No. And do you ever know anyone who is able even to get near him and eating? No, I do not. Okay. So our money rests now with a broker. And our opponents put up a like amount that Joe Duffel will appear. But you say something about ten grand. Ah. We go back to New York, Broadway, and we get Satan citizens to put up dough. We take a certain percentage of their winnings for putting them onto a good thing. Mm. Well, are you sure these certain parties will go for this? Broadway, who does not go for a sure thing? Nobody. Then let us proceed back to New York and make arrangements. <laughs> Well, we do so, and arrangements are made. Bets are put up with a party who takes care of such things. The bets are heavy because it turns out that Joe Duffel's backers are very wealthy citizens of Boston, Mass. While Nicely Nicely's backers are such characters as uh, Dave the Dude, Little Mitzi, Angie the Ox, Milkier Willie, and etc. This makes me more than somewhat nervous, because if anything happens to cause these here parties to be separated from their tour, they are gonna hold me and Harry strictly accountable. But Harry is not worried, because, as he says in Mindy's, it is a sure thing, Broadway. We stand to collect maybe three grand apiece. Not as good as a first figure, but uh, all right. Uh oh, here comes little Mitzi. You worry too much. You will ruin your health. I would rather do it myself than leave it to little Mitzi. Shh, do not look worried. Appear nonchalant. Hello, Broadway. Harry. Hello, little Mitzi. Uh, sit down, Mitzi. Thanks, I will. Because I have a little thing to discuss with you two. 
Certainly, certainly. You wish to put up more potatoes on the eating contest. I am already in tight for five grand. Today I have a bad day, and the five grand is my total capital. You have got no worries, Mitzi. Uh, has he, Broadway? If he does not, I will share mine. Look, I discussed this with Dave the Dude, Angie the Ox, and Milk Air Willie. What am I eating? Huh? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Oh. Well, we are willing to bet on nicely, nicely. We think he is a short thing. That he is, that he is. But we do a little thinking and we come to a conclusion. Which is? Where is he? Where is who? Nicely, nicely. We're in New York, is he not? Do you see him lately, Broadway? I... no. Harry? Uh, come to think of it, uh, no, but uh, I am sure he is alive. Then the thing to do is make sure you two stay the same. Huh? What do you mean, Mitzi? Where is nicely, nicely? He is our entry and we do not want him scratched. Find him. You will, uh, Mitzi... Find I... him or another world in which to live. I will keep in touch with you. Often. Oh, Harry, where is nicely, nicely? Now that I think about it, I do not remember seeing him for weeks. Come on, we have got to find him. We sure do. And while we look for him, we will pick up some timetables of ocean liners and aeroplanes. In case. So we start the hunt for nicely, nicely. We will know him if we see him. Because he is about 5'5 five, five and weighs in at close to 300. He is a horse player by trade, but Eaton is his hobby. But no one remembers seeing him lately. Then we get a lead, and we go to a place on Long Island and knock at a door. It is opened, not by Nicely Nicely, but by a tall, thin Judy. She is without doubt beautiful, but so skinny that Harry walks right into her before he sees her. She looks at us and says, What do you want? Uh, excuse us, miss, but we are told we can find Nicely Nicely here. Who? Nicely Nicely Joan. No. Oh, you must mean Quentin. Who? Quentin, Quentin Jones. The last name is correct, but the first one is an insult. Will you please tell me what you want? Can we see not... Uh, Mr. Jones. Why? It is very important. About what? Is he here? Who are you? Look, miss, it is urgent that we get in touch with our friend. Now. Hilda. Hilda. What is it, Quentin? Who's there? I don't know. That is not Nicely's voice. No, it is not. It is too weak. Then you've probably got the wrong Jones. Yeah, I guess so. Let us go, Broadway. Hilda, who is it? What's the matter? It's nothing, Quentin. These men have the wrong address. Broadway. Harry. Oh, my friends. Come in, come in. Quentin, do you know these men? They're my friends. They... Broadway. Harry. Why are you looking at me like that? You you are a faker. You are not nicely, nicely. But I am. Look at me real good. Who am I? Nicely? Where does all of you go to? What happens to you nicely? Now, look here, you two. If you have business with Quentin, very well. If you don't, please leave. Nicely, we have got to see you. Yeah, Hilda, baby, these are my old friends. I wish to talk to them. Oh, well... All right, but remember what I said. Yes, Hilda. If you do anything I don't like, it's all off. Yes, baby. I'm going shopping. I'll be back in half an hour. And remember, Quentin. I will never forget. Ah, she is beautiful. Mm, she is. But nicely, what is the matter with you? We, uh, we better sit down. At least I better. Ah. I cannot stand up for long. You are sick? Oh, no, no. I am real healthy. Healthy? Healthy? Look at your pants. They are wrapped twice around your waist. Uh-huh. I lose some weight. Some? You have got enough space between your waistband and your waist to tuck away your racehorse. Those are the conditions Hilda gives me. Conditions? Hilda? Nicely, what are you talking about? She is my fiancée. I love her. She loves me. She? Nicely, you mean she makes you lose weight? When I am down to 200, we're going to get married. You mean you are not eating? Nothing with starch in it. 
Why have all the good things to eat got starch in them? Nicely. Think of your health. Hilda says I'm very healthy this way. How do you feel? Very healthy. If Hilda says so, I am. This is impossible. Look at you. How do you get mixed up with this doll? Love at first sight. We meet in the subway. I am wedged in a turnstile and she pushes me through. Harry, let us say goodbye to New York. Let us say goodbye to everything. Nicely. Listen to us for a minute, will you? Sure. But do not ask me to stand up. So we tell nicely, nicely what is the score. When we talk about Eaton, his eyes shine like six bits. But then he becomes very sad again and says as follows. I am very sorry, boys, but Hilda will never hear of it. She will break our engagement if I so much as touch a grape. Uh, Broadway, do you ever eat nothing but toasted whole wheat for a whole month? No. What I eat is nice white French bread, corn muffins, and hot biscuits with gravy on them. You are eating yourself into an early grave, and furthermore, you are breaking my heart. Look nicely. Maybe if we talk to Hilda, there might be an outside chance she will let you save our lives. You can talk to her, but I promise nothing. I... Quentin? In here, baby, in here. Oh. What did you eat? Not a crumb. Did I, boys? Not the crumb. Good. I'm going to fix your dinner in a minute. What are you going to fix? Because you've been such a good boy. A treat. What? What is it, Hilda? Wheat germ and carrot juice. Ooh. I can hardly wait. You'll like it, I'm sure. She is conspiring against your life. Nicely, you have got to get out of here before you have to use nails to hold your pants on. I am in love with her. That is your final word? It is hers. I see. And I know there is no use talking to her. No, I guess not. You will not do it for us, your friends. I have to think of my health. And my future. Nicely, I have got news for you. Your future is as dark as ours. Goodbye. And that is that. It looks like I and Harry the horse are done for. We know that it is useless to argue with the guy in love. We leave nicely and start back to town, figuring that when it gets dark, we can grab anything that moves fast enough to get us far, far away. Then something happens that gives us hope. And what that is, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, A Piece of Pie. Like I say, Harry and me are wondering where to go. We say nothing to anybody about nicely, nicely, because we have got to have time. Then Harry goes to Belmont Park, and later he shows up in my hotel room. Broadway, Broadway, you know Did what? You, Harry, do not jump in like that, especially not at a time like this. Broadway, today we get a break it. What are you doing? Hack him, what else? You do not have to. Sit down and listen to me. Yeah, I do that once before, and I am now cemetery bait. No! I go to the track today, and I give a tip to a character named McBurgle. You are feverish. There is nobody named that. And if there is, what good is he to us? He is the employer of Miss Hilda Slocum, whom you will recall as Nicely Nicely's fiancé. Nothing makes sense anymore. Listen to me, will you? I give a tip to this McBurgle. He is very happy because he win a lot of potatoes. Then I find out he is editor of a magazine called Let's Keep House. Harry, I have just got time to pack another handkerchief and catch a train. Goodbye. Stay here and die by yourself. Will you sit down and listen? Broadway, McBurgle is going to talk to Hilda Slocum. He is going to try to persuade her to let us have nicely, nicely. Oh? How does he think he is going to do that? I do not know, but we are going to see nicely, nicely and Hilda now. You want us to go outside? It is dangerous out there. This is our only chance. Let us go. I hope we will get pretty flowers. <laughs> I know why you're here. I don't know what influence you have with my editor. I don't even know how you managed to meet him, and I don't want to know. But I can tell you one thing. Which is? That even if it costs me my job, I will not permit Quentin to enter that stupid, absurd, ridiculous, and sickening eating contest. Look, miss... You listen to me, Mr. Horse. The name is Harry. I don't care what it is. And you, Mr. Broadway, you listen to me, too. I'll not stand by and see Quentin's health ruined by the greediness and mercenary objectives of his so-called friends. Oh, that does it. See, boys? And, Quentin, if you love me and want to marry me, 
Do you? Yes, Hilda, baby. Then you won't even consider what they're asking. Look, Miss Slocum, there is at stake not only money, but the health of two other people, namely Harry and me. So I was given to understand. All right. Because my editor, Mr. McBurgle, asked me, I'll help you. I eat. Boys, I eat. You do not. But you say... I said I'd help, not let you have Quentin. You can have a friend of mine, Violet Schumberger. Who? Who? Violet Schumberger, a very dear friend. Hey, I know her, boy. She is no selling plate, but a real entry. But she is not you, nicely. You can have Violet or no one. But, uh, can she eat? I've been trying for ten years to put her on a diet. It's only because she's such a dear friend that I put up with her... her appetite. Boys, next to me, this doll Violet is easy one, two, in any race where eating is concerned. Yeah, but, 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 but how will we explain the, 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 the switch to little Mitzi and the others? Broadway? It looks like we will have to. Uh, Miss Slocum, when can we see your friend? I'll bring her to see you. When? Tomorrow. All right. Tomorrow at noon at Mindy's. Boys, the rest of the boys are very angry that you do this to us. But we tell you, Mitzi, it is not our fault. Can we help it if Nicely Nicely falls in love and gives up eating because of it? This Violet Schumbiger doll better be good. She better be good. Hey, it is almost noon. Yeah, there they are. Uh, is that the doll? It must be. I never see such a large doll. She has got a face like a town clock. My goodness, she is quite large. Boys, maybe you save yourself a lot of trouble. But the question is, can she eat? And there is Nicely Nicely and his fiancée. I never see such a large doll. Look, she's coming in sideways. Shh, be nice to her. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Nicely. 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 Gentlemen, this is Violet Schumberger. Uh, how do you do? It is a pleasure. Hello. Hello yourselves. <laughs> well, when do we start eating? Violet. Ah, oh, don't be so stuffy, Hilda. Hmm, smells good in here. I think I'll have lunch. You just did, 20 minutes ago. Lunch! She calls roast chicken, gravy, biscuits, honey, mashed potatoes, and pie a lunch. <laughs> well, who wants to see me? Who can that? Uh, miss, uh, you know why you are here? Sure do, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> miss, do not hit me like that again. Can't take it, eh? <laughs> Well, let's get started. And Miss Violet Schumberger eats for us. Two hours later, even little Mitzi is convinced that we have a good entry. Especially when Miss Hilda Slocum agrees to let Nicely Nicely coach Violet for the contest. Then comes the day of the contest, which takes place in a private room in Mindy's. Everybody concerned is there, including two judges called in from neutral country. Harry the horse and me are very neighbors again, because when we see Joe Duffel, who is our opponent, Harry says to me... Broadway, he looks like a pretty fair eater. Yeah, he is lean and tall. He will be dangerous. And I do not like the way little Mitzi is looking at us. All right, everyone, all right, let's have your attention. As one of the judges, I must call your attention to the rules of this contest. Oh, attention, please, attention. Now, here are the rules. <clears throat> the two contestants must eat with knife and fork or spoon. Speed will not count, only the amount of food consumed. We will take into account any food left on the plates over an ounce. Liquids will not count in the scoring. The losing side is to pay for the food. In case of a tie, the contestants will eat it off immediately in ham and eggs. We agreed that a coin will be tossed to see who gets to choose the first course. Harry, Broadway, your contestant ready? Yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh... Violet, how do you feel? Fine, fine. I warmed up on sauerkraut and spare you, ribs. You eat before you get here? I was hungry. Nicely. Why do you let her do it? I feel sorry for her when she tells me she's hungry. Oh, no. Well, gentlemen. Well, we are ready. Then call the toss. Hey, to heads. Tails. Mr. Duffel, name the first course. Two quarts of olives, two bunches of celery, and a pint of walnuts. Agreed. Miss Schumberger? Name the second course. Twelve dozen cherry stone clams. Mr. Duffel? Two gallons of Philadelphia pepper pot soup. Two five-pound striped bass. A twenty-pound roast turkey. I will repeat the order so there will be no argument later. First course, two quarts of olives, two bunches of celery, and a pint of walnuts. Second course, twelve dozen cherry stone clams. Third course, two gallons. Well, 
that goes on until a dessert is decided on. Miss Violet Schumberger calls it, and it is a pumpkin pie two feet across and no less than three inches deep. The contest starts at 8.30 p.m. sharp, and for a while there is no sound except eat. Then little Mitzi whispers to me as follows. Broadway, she is not keeping up with this Joe Duffel. Well, yet, Mitzi, it is not speed that counts. Yeah, that is right. I do not like the way this is going. I wish nicely, nicely is in there. Now, wait a minute. She is beginning to catch up a little. Yeah, yeah, she is. No, 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 she is not. Joe Duffel is slowing down a little. All right, bring the turkey and split it in half. Now we will see the real eating start. Just a minute, just a minute. What is the matter with her? Violet, what is the matter? I... I forgot something. Huh? Violet, why do you stop eating? You've got half a turkey. Give up, Miss Schumburger. Give up? <laughs> I haven't started. I just wanted to ask, where's the stuffing for the turkey? <laughs> Where is the stuffing, she asks. Joe Duffer looks a little startled at this. But they keep eating on even times until the waiter brings the pumpkin pie. And the scene is as follows. Last course dessert, each contestant will eat half this pumpkin pie. Ready, Mr. Duffel? Ready. Ready, Miss Schumberger? I, uh, yes. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Hey, she's asking advice of her coach. That's not allowed. What do you mean? That's, That's a foul. Now, wait, wait, everyone. I'll have to consult with my colleague. Hold everything. Broadway, you better start running. You too, Harry. No, no, wait a minute, Mitzi. We... Attention, please. My colleague and I have decided that no actual foul in the eating has been committed. However, if Miss Schumberger did ask advice, then there is a foul. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Jones, will you tell us what Miss Schumberger whispered to you? Why, sure. All she asks is, when she finishes, can she have another piece of pie? Oh, 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 gentlemen, I'm licked. I can't eat another bite. He's quitting. Hey, he's quitting. It's useless for me to go on against this, this, uh, girl who asks for more pie even before she starts on the piece before her. I'm almost dying as it is, and I don't want to destroy myself in a useless effort. <laughs> gentlemen, he's not... Human. Three cheers for Miss Violet Schumberger. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Broadway, Harry, you are geniuses. Hey, look, Joe Duffel passes out under the table. Ah! Nicely, nicely. Look, nicely also passes out. Oh, all right, all right, everybody out. Come on, clear the premises. We will take care of things. Come on, outside. Poor nicely. Poor nicely. Is he dead? No, no, he just looks like he has fainted. I owe everything to him, everything. Huh? You mean we owe everything to you. Oh, no, no. What I really whispered to him was... was that I was a goner. That Mr. Duffel is... a... Pig. Well, the doctors at the receiving hospital are greatly puzzled later to receive from the same address at the same time one patient who is suffering from undernourishment and another one who is unconscious from overeating. Now, that is not the end of my story, not by a long shot. And what really is, I will tell you in a minute. <laughs> Well, the payoff comes some days later when I am sitting in Mindy's. I look up and who is standing by my table but Miss Hilda Slocum? Naturally, I am very curious as to why she is in an eating place. I ask her to sit down, and she says... What's that you're eating, Mr. Broadway? This, uh, chicken fricassee with dumplings. Hot biscuits and honey. Why? Is it good? Wonderful. But, uh, why do you ask? Oh, I just wondered. Uh, by the way, how is Nicely Nicely coming along? I don't know. He's out of the hospital, but I haven't seen him. Or Miss Violet Schumberger. What? They... They eloped together. They sent me a postcard. You mean Nicely Nicely and Miss Violet Schumberger? They are married? Yes, they're in Florida. They opened a barbecue stand, and the chances are they... They're eating like seven mules. How do you like that? I don't. Men. They're all alike. A woman does something to help them, to please them, and they... Yeah, they... I, I see. I, I am sorry, Miss Slocum. My editor, I... He... Oh? Well, what about him? He... 
Said he'd take me dancing if there was anything to take hold of. I see. And you like to dance? Very much. That chicken and dumplings. They're really good. Oh, very good. But, of course, not for people who are on a diet. I want some. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what are you staring at me for? Oh, nothing. I am just thinking, you must be very fond of dancing. (laughs) Waiter, another order of this, and make it snappy. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, A Piece of Pie. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. (laughs) ¶¶